Hey guys, I'm Zoe from Plekvetica and today we're here in Zurich at the Dynamo. It's the Mesa Festival and I am here with Inquisition. So, okay, now for everyone who does not know you yet, who are you and where are you from? So, uh, I'm Dagon, known as Dagon from Inquisition, founding member. Uh, I play guitar, I do vocals, I write the music. Uh, I reside in the outskirts of Seattle, USA. And uh, for many years before in the U.S., I was living where half my family's from in Colombia and South America, where I started Inquisition in 1989. So, but uh, I mean, I've been in the U.S. since 1996. Yeah. Good. Since your uh, second album, you are only two artists. Degen on the guitar, so you and the vocals, and Incubus playing the drums. Um, was there at uh, any time some difficulties being only a duo? Uh, there's always there's always challenges. I think that may be unique to uh, being a two piece. Uh, whenever I'm asked a question like this, it's a little difficult to answer because I don't know any other difference. This is this is all I know. This is the only band I've been in, and uh, it's always been. A two-piece only is a two-piece. Uh, uh, for some logistics, things like that, you know, we have crew and stuff to help. But uh, you know, not uh, maybe, maybe you know, there's just, there's less cooks in the kitchen, so less of a mess. Uh, on the other hand, sometimes when uh, certain th workloads, logistics, tour-related or album planning, uh, studio planning, you know, gets busy. Uh, extra help could be nice, but it's not missed. I mean, not really. It's it's a really good formula. It works out as a two-piece perfectly for nearly everything. It's working out, out like this. That's fine. Super. So, and you're saying that uh, it's hard to find a, another member, maybe a bass player or whatever, who is on the same mental state and uh, is not a drug addict. Is it hard to not to be on drugs, or what is the problem? Well, what you're mentioning is was my original reason for getting rid of a bass player that we had for only a few months. Uh, I don't really care what a person does. You know, I, I leave emotions out as long as they do what they need to do, but uh, I, I definitely do not welcome any drama into the band. Uh, I, I I would rather have you know an artist that in this band that is a bit secluded, private with their life, uh, highly focused on Inquisition, not on me, but on 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 the spirit of what Inquisition is, which is no different than what the spirit of black metal is, in my opinion. And uh, that was not easy to find many many years ago. And uh, uh, for some bands, a bass is something very necessary. For us, it's not. And that's why it was not a prioritized instrument for touring or rehearsing. It was planned for later down the road to have a bass player. But eventually we started doing shows like this and I thought, why do I have to force myself to get a bass player? Let's keep it like this. It's unique. I like it. And we kept it like that. So we don't have a bass player, not because I have some kind of over-the-top paranoia of a person's personal habits, but yeah, that's important. But uh, I just thought it was a great formula how we had it while we were going through the period of, you know, seeing who would kind of magically appear and fit right into Inquisition. Uh, but like I said, we tried 
you know, a few shows in 2001 in Europe. Imagine, we debuted in Europe as a two-piece. And when we went back home, I figured it worked out so good, let's keep it like that. And that's the story. Yeah. Yeah, if it fits, then it fits. That's right. Yeah. And, uh, yes. So you're now on tour through, through Europe with uh, Septic Flesh. Um, how is it going so far? Oh, it's... This is this tour has ha probably had some of the the biggest uh, challenges ever uh, ever touring. Some extremely difficult situations that, in fact, unfortunately, the first show. Imagine we could not play our first show, which was in Munich. Uh, none of our our bags, our luggage did not arrive. Shit. Nothing. Uh, Everything was against uh, against us. Every, I mean, everything. Uh, imagine, you know, we have Plan Bs. Well, Plan B didn't arrive. That's why I traveled with two guitars. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, they told us the bags would arrive. We, yes, we arrived a day before the show, and they said that the bags would arrive the next day, would be sent to the, the venue. They never arrived. Then they told us they'd be arriving in the venue around 8 o'clock. We were due to play in Munich around, I think it was 10 o'clock. So then Septic Flesh said they would go ahead and play so I could wait on the bags. The guitars never arrived. Long story short, we found out the next day they had never left Amsterdam. Uh, so it was a mess. Um, and then there were some other issues. Uh, what was it? Uh, yesterday. Or, Day before yesterday, uh, in in uh, Bologna, uh, Incubus, he had some extremely serious issues in the bus. We found him passed out, picked him up. He had blood all over his face. Uh, then la later he went through the same episode again, and uh, he had to go to the hospital. So medical things are are very private, but what I can back up and I can tell people is uh, essentially he had extreme dehydration. Uh, it, was, it was from the shows, the stress, and uh, they ran some scans on him, did a blood test. No, it has nothing to do, it had nothing to do with some kind of a hangover. We haven't even drank or anything on this tour, so. So that was another one, missed another show or something like that. But when it comes to the things that, that are working, extremely good. I think uh, a lot of people that were never interested in Inquisition are are getting a heavy dose of cult black metal when it comes to, for example, the fans of Septic Flesh. Um, so that, that's that's a good thing, you know. Uh, crossing over fans in that sense is okay with me. If, if there's people who had no insight at all to what this genre truly is, uh, I don't mind Inquisition being their uh, gateway band, so that's where this tour is beneficial for us. Yeah. So um, we see Incubus' Twitter is fine again? Good, yeah, super. He's fine. He's good. Yeah. Super, yeah. perfect. And yes, um, as far as I know, you and Septic Flesh are a very different band since you are popular or. Um, Inquisition is popular for being a very satanic band and uh, Septic Flesh isn't. Uh, what was the reason you two were going on tour together? Well, uh, unfortunately there's no major romance behind the reason. It was, it was management uh, contacting us. I mean, those are the cold facts. Would you be interested in touring with Septic Flesh? We had already toured with them twice in like 2012 and then 2000. Uh, I think it was 14 with DSI back in the States. It's the first time, though, we toured together in Europe. However, however, uh, besides it just being a management decision, how I see it fitting for Inquisition is uh, septic flesh in their own way. You know, today we don't use the word Satanism as much or Satanic this, Satanic that, but... Uh, they very much have their obscure side. They, uh, I've had, I've been able to talk a lot with Seth. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's a lot of dark stuff going on in, okay. in their, their, their lyrics and their, their content and their theme. And uh, I like their, their vampiric, uh, vampiric thing they got uh, involved with it. And uh, there's a lot of work, a lot of very, very elaborated uh, musical work to their music and uh, and it's dark and it they're doing their own thing and that's what I respect uh, I think they are a very serious man that I'm nobody to judge but when I say serious I mean you know I think I think it's a respectable lineup so it fits so yeah. okay perfect so um did you experience something uh, very special, exciting, or whatever on this year? So, besides of the incubus sickness? Yeah, yeah, n nothing really out of the ordinary, you know. Other than there's been some incredible shows. Uh, Budapest is extremely memorable. That was an incredible show. Uh, excellent people there. Hungary is has a excellent scene. I mean, they're. They're still into all the dark, obscure stuff on a, in a large scale. Uh, but no, it's, it's, a, it's a classic winter tour. Uh, it's not easy, and that's, that's a good thing. That's, that's what makes you push harder and, uh, to make things work at their best. Um, that's, that's, how, that's how music works. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're totally right. So um, when you started the band, when it was totally new, it was has it had another name. It was uh, Guillotine. Yes. Why did you change it, or uh, why was it then Guillotine? Yeah, that's ironic because in 1988, I remember looking at, Tome and here I'm in Switzerland saying this. I was looking at Tomegatherian. Celtic Frost album to Megatherian and Tom Warrior I, I noticed uh, had said also special thanks to Guillotine and because of that small little sh uh, shout out to probably some super unknown band at the time and now I was obsessed with the fact that somebody already had taken that name so I thought I have to change it yeah yeah that's it that's why okay fine so um yeah how would you uh, describe all the changes the band went through from uh, Guillotine to uh, the Inquisition of today? Uh, a very uh, uh, changes, but at the same time, no changes. Uh, changes of genre, but everything musically speaking is connected. If I were to sit down and show you our early thrash material, my early thrash material, on a guitar and show you how it slowly evolved into what it is today. It's it's extremely similar. What changes is the the tuning, the the tremolo picking, some slightly larger chords, but still to this day we are so thrash metal by roots uh, on this fretboard. I mean it's 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 something I'm, I'm makes me pretty happy to to, to realize that. What I grew up to is still making a, a huge impression in, in what the Black Metal Inquisition does today uh, is. Uh, so, uh, you know, we were, we were, to summarize, for people who still don't know, uh, you could say we were like, a, something like a Sodom creator school. Uh, basically, very German-like thrash metal 80s uh, that I eventually discovered black metal of 90s and I thought I have to move forward to me moving forward meant getting into deeper darker more mysterious things you know and I think today a lot of people take that for granted I think a lot of people have demystified black metal uh, but I still still see the mystery in it uh, there, there will always be a veil of the hidden of the occult of the unknown 
that's what black metal is about. It's about being known. And uh, that's what I felt like I was stepping into when I shedded my old leaves of thrash metal. Walking into the realm of black metal was like walking into a completely dark room, wanting to learn about that room without turning on the lights. Uh, simply by tact, smell, senses, discovering what is in that, in that room. Uh, in this case, it would be the mind, and it would be music, a black metal doing that. And uh, that's still where I'm at today. Uh, but musically, you know, added some blast beats, a lot of blast beats. Uh, took some, oh, not some, a lot of the chords I was playing in early Inquisition. And, uh, you know, turned them into arpeggios or tremolo picked. It's, you know, uh, different shapes. Um, but still the same. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's. I can't think of any other metaphors, really. I mean, it's just change, but no change. So, yeah. And obviously, the vocals were a major change. But, yeah. but uh, all in all, it's still Inquisition, like Absolutely. this. All right. I, did, I didn't change the band name uh, because, first of all, I remember it took me like a month to think. When I moved up back up to the U.S. in '96, and I started to write the first album, I was overthinking the first, the name of the band. What am I going to call this? And the deeper I got in, the deeper I got into writing Infernal Regions, the first album, and as the songs were coming up, I thought. The band name, you know, of my old thrash band, Inquisition, is just perfect for this. I mean, I don't, I don't give a shit if it's some Catholic institution. It's irony, you know. It's what's behind it: the medievalness, and the rawness, and the darkness, and the, the brutality of what's behind that name. Just fits perfect for a black metal band, so I kept it. And then I thought, well, one day, ironic doing an interview, we can talk about the earlier roots of the Inquisition. Versus, for example, talk to us about your first band Inquisition, you know? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So, um, you started to talk about the album, your first, so um, I will ask you about another album. In uh, 2010, you wrote the album, I got to read it, it's that long, um, Ominous Doctrines of the Perpetual Mystical Macrocosm. So, um, what inspirations did go through you uh, when you wrote it? Riffs, riffs, and a lot of riffs. A lot of riffs. Uh, what's always inspired me for the guitar, but for that, for that album, it was very riff-driven. I remember telling myself I wanted to, at that time, uh, and I'm getting, I'm getting this vibe again for this next album I'm going to write. But I remember uh, I was always an oldest Fix fan of the riffs. And I remember there were a few little things in there of the, of the grooving type death me old death metal that I wanted to have. And that's how that riff, for example, uh, Command of the Dark Crown, the way it starts. You know, it's... it's that, that one riff really drove the vibe of the whole album. Simply, what would change would be things slowing down, like Desolate Funeral Chant, or speeding up a bit, like Astral Path, but there's a constant groove to the whole thing, to the whole album. I mean, maybe, maybe it deserves a different name. Maybe groove people will take it to rock and roll, but... Um, you know, very, it really, the album like physically moves you. It, it, it has movement, it has movement. And uh, as odd as the sounds, <clears throat> I don't, excuse me, I'm, I'm sick, so I sound odd, but uh, I don't think people are used to, I don't think people are used to hearing a black metal songwriter say that sometimes physical movement can inspire me to write certain riffs 
you know, I can just be sitting there with the guitar thinking and kind of get a vibe of some kind and, 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 ju and just break into that riff and go, shit, I got something and record it. Yeah. That happened a lot with that album. Yeah. A lot, yeah. So, uh, another question to all of the albums. Why are all of your album titles that fucking long? Yes. Um, because it's different. Because uh, there's more to say. Uh, because they're less pop titles. Uh, because they look fucking cool. Imagine if, like, the newest album would have been called Bloodshed. That would be boring. Imagine the first album, Infernal Regions. That would be uh, just like, normal. <laughs> just like when we nickname, you know, our, our, our album titles when we're doing merchandise or, you know, hey, we need 10 more uh, invoking shirts, you know. Imagine if those really would have been the titles. Invoking, you know, or, and all that stuff. So, you know, ominous doctrines or... Um, the titles will always start out with one or two key words and then I build around it so you know uh, you know an example would be the tree well the tree of well everybody uses of in their titles or I've used that a lot so what else the tree that what or the tree and you start building around that what other elements do you want around this tree how much do you want to reveal is this tree a metaphorical or is it literal how tall is it where is it standing where are the roots going and so you end up with a nice long title you know because it's very descriptive but uh, so it's a uh it's like a, a, a whole story around the album before you just listen to it, right? Yeah, not all the album titles. Some of them are simply symbolic. Yeah. But for example, the newest album, on Bloodshed, uh, the newest album title does really encompass, speak for the whole album. Yes, it's, it's about the chaos of the universe that's the complete cosmic bloodshed when the universe exploded the gods collided there was the battle the universe was born and it continues to expand it continues to show its grandeur and its magnificent force through everlasting expansion that goes beyond the zenith so there are no horizons it's everlasting power something like that you know how do you describe that yeah it's you can't really describe it at all because it's always moving along but um, that's very impressive that's really very impressive um, but Yes, at this time most mus musicians aren't able anymore just to live from their music. Is this uh, in this case too or uh, do you have a job beside the band? This is what I do full time. This is what I do full time. And uh, it can be done. I think uh, metal in general is probably at its biggest time ever. And. Uh, thanks to the support to everybody a lot of musicians now uh, that I know of you know can do this full time and I think that's important because it gives you more time to make better better material yes the daily grind of a, of, of a job like I had for many years while I was doing all the other albums and touring earlier before you know those obstacles of the daily grind as we call it Uh, they, they, yeah, they can, they can inspire, they can be part of your writing and your universe, but, you know, in all honesty, the inspiration for black metal can be much better coming from introversion, intros, introspecting, and, and looking at things, you know, 
from the inside out rather than you know what you did at work all day and the daily stresses of life yes those stresses don't go away life is not by any means easier because you're doing music full time it's not uh, you're going to have other stresses that and obstacles of different kind of obstacles uh, uh, but what, what does change is having your full availability to write and this is why any musician that does this full time definitely it's a must that they they improve their songwriting their skills albums should get better because fans have given you the luxury to do this full time with their support album sales the tour uh, circuit is keeping you going so you better give them good albums because because what then what are you doing at home you know so like before uh, I would prioritize a Saturday or Sunday for writing and I want fans to know that the beauty is you know I can wake up at 2 in the morning grab my guitar and start tracking I don't have to worry and think oh, I have to be up at 6 in the morning so there is no schedule you write at your best moments and even if you don't have best moments you, you create them so yeah wonderful um, do you have some music uh, some hobbies beside the music uh yeah you know uh I think I game a little too much. Yeah. Yeah, I game a little too much. I've been gaming Titans Fall 2 a little too much and Battlefield 1 lately a little too much also. Yeah. Some other games? Just interesting? I, I, I ride a bike a lot and everything. Uh, other other games? Yeah. The whole Battlefield series, I still play it. <laughs> I got that last Call of Duty, the World War II one, and it's not bad. But yeah, still play a lot of Titans Fall 2. Still waiting to see if they'll come out with a three. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much. But uh, I get out a lot, you know, need to walk, walks in the mountains and stuff. But I don't think those are hobbies. Uh, those are It's not bad at all. So yeah. Um, do you miss something, something from your home while being on tour? Uh, believe it or not, uh, being alone. Uh, yeah, I, I, I do. I can enjoy being alone a lot. I really can. Uh, but I enjoy being around people a lot also. A lot. Um, but yeah, it, I, like, I like being alone for, uh, I don't know, just get, you can think a lot, you know. Thinking for, thinking for me is important. I don't know if it's because uh, I don't think that's unique to me, but I've analyzed this, and I think it's because some people who have a little more creative output than others by nature need to be alone a little more to, to think, to create. I think you know a lot of the inspiration, a lot of the songwriting... Not a, I shouldn't say this, uh, uh, some of it, I mean all of it comes from being alone. Uh, so that really gives you a lot of uh, positive uh, introversion, yeah. But, you know, I mean there could be negative, some people, you know, they don't get anything positive out of uh, down loan time. Uh, but that's, that's what I miss from, you know, And possible just so for some silence from time to time. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean some of that, but it's more. Uh, it's just a, such a different dynamic. You're you're, uh, you're around a lot of movement, a lot of on tour. It's the complete opposite of the of uh, the the cosmos of black metal. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, silence and darkness and all that. No, uh, it's it's. It's concrete and cities and a lot of people. And, uh, but when you're on the stage, that one hour, it does become that, that, that cosmos per se. 
So that's that's where touring makes up for it, and that's why you're doing it. That's why. Okay, I believe. Um, you already had the concert tonight, so uh, what was it for you like? It's good. I mean, any, any show here in Switzerland is always different because we have that decibel limit. Yeah. So it's really quiet. And, you know, it's... Uh, but I'm used to it. Uh, yeah, just just speaking my mind. I wasn't too happy with the speakers. To, the, uh, some fans will understand, but my 4x12 cabs, the ones that they furnished here, incredible PA system, incredible monitors, everything is top, top notch. The sound of the room, incredible. And then they give us these just horrible 4x12s really really bad but uh, my sound guy said that they cut through into the crowd meaning what you heard he said that they were they were great they were good um, but yeah they sounded like they had a blown speaker or something but he said they were good and the show what, what really matters all that technical stuff aside uh, it was excellent it was great it really I mean such a generic <laughs> answer but what do you say it was it was it was every every show has to be great and that's that's if i'm not feeling it uh halfway through the first song i make sure i will and what i'm doing is i'm soul searching why am i not feeling it what am i dwelling on am i pissed because i'm not hearing the guitar the way i want to hear it don't think about that you know Move, walk somewhere else on stage, find find the good spot and listen to it there. So I always make sure that, that it's gonna be a great show for me. Yeah, always, always. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, that's it. Do you want to say something else? Maybe some greetings to your fans, some friends, to your mom, whatever. Oh, yeah, uh, everybody, everybody knows I'll always say hi to them if I see them or, uh, here in Switzerland, it's great. It's a very unique, always been a unique scene over here. Uh, the bands that have been produced, always very avant-garde, different. Uh, always, 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 Switzerland always carved their own niche in metal. And so I always, I'm always happy when we come over here because I know that even though Inquisition was never in the category of very original or very avant-garde we still have a little bit of both i think we have our unique things and we have our not avant-garde but we have our our, our different something and uh i think that's why we fit right in here and feel really comfortable playing here for for fans so but yeah thank you that's all i can say is thank you i want to thank you Okay. for the interview and thanks to you all to all who watched us um, don't forget to like it to share it to subscribe it um, and for Inquisition 2 the links are down here in the box just look at it go for it and thank you